Welcome back. I'm Sean and this is the Mountains Garage YouTube channel where hopefully you liked and more importantly subscribed, maybe made a comment. I'm going to get it in early today. <laughs> anyway, in today's video, I finished wrestling with the installation of the Tom Waters Performance shield over the body of my Turbo 400 for my 72 Nova Twin Turbo project. I installed one on the transmission that I just took out of the car with the stock pan and it was almost no issue putting it on whatsoever. With the thick aluminum pan, uh, if you remember from the previous video, the B&M pan wouldn't fit at all. This is the Transmission Specialty Jegs Pan. Still created quite a problem, but I was committed and I got it to fit without modifying the shield itself, which would be a no-no. And then I installed in the car, make a bracket and install and plumb the dump valve. So let's get at it. It's funny, I was shooting little clips for this and I looked at it and I had already achieved three quarters of it and I only had like five minutes worth of video. I'm like, hmm. Seems like I've accomplished a lot. Some days I talk that much, so let's get at it. Finishing up the shield install from the last video, where I cried about not having the right fitting, I did. Actually, I'd prefer one that was anodized, but hey, I'll take the brass one. It actually tucks in there really nice. I said I had them in bags and boxes, or in many cases, bags in boxes, more boxes, but I forgot all about the bins, eighth pipe, a whole bag of brass fittings. Hey, I got it on there. That's all that matters, but I could have done it a couple hours ago. I was actually inside thinking about it when it came to me. You know how it goes. So now the low dollar motorsports zero to 300, in this case, line pressure sender is installed with the pre-made harness that I bought that should uh, reach all the way to the Holley Terminator inside the car. I'm sure there's a correct term for the undiagnosed condition that I suffer from, but maybe you're just like me that when you install something, you have to be able to read the part number from its normal upright position. That's just the way I am. And I'm okay with it. And before I went any further, I wanted to make sure I had Bellhausen bolts. These are M10 one and a half by 35 millimeter long. I had to machine the flange a little bit so it would fit in the recess. So I did that for one, two, three, four. And the lower ones take a longer bolt and it has to be an Allen head to clear or a reduced head bolt with a like a 13 millimeter head instead of 15, which I didn't have, but believe it or not, I did have an M10 one and a half by 60 Allen head bolt times two, put an AN washer on it. It's perfect. After a semi ridiculous amount of effort, I have the shield installed with the aluminum pan. I used my oblong hole puncher to oblong the holes in the pan brackets for the shield. In retrospect, a die grinder would have been just as efficient, probably more so. That allowed me to bolt the shield on through the brackets, Nice and tight to the transmission, which I was looking for, and I needed just a little more right here against the floor. I probably had a width of a piece of paper. Now I probably have a sixteenth of more, so that's a mile with solid engine mounts. Next issue was the aluminum under brackets were hitting the fins on the pan, so I had to oblong those holes too with my aluminum burr. That was a piece of cake. I only had to go a little bit, so no problem there. Then I had to shorten the conical head Allen bolts because they hit the pan. And just to recap, I had this shield, the Tom Waters Performance product, bolted on the transmission that was in the Nova with a stock pan 
All I did is use some 516 spacers to space it down so it didn't hit the lip on the pan. The brackets I had, these brackets plus this, no other modifications required, and the shield fell right on. So they should just tell you right off the bat, the shield won't work with an aluminum pan unless you want to do about five hours worth of modifications. And again, you can't modify this piece, but you can modify the brackets and those no problem. So anyway, we got it and it fits perfect with a stock pan. So make your choices. I was committed at this point, so I kept going. I was half thinking about swinging the transmission around and mocking up the mountain cross member and drive shaft loop and all that stuff here on the bench and finish the dump valve ins installation when I decided it would just be easier to bolt it in the car and do it over there. After yesterday's video, a viewer mentioned that my combination pressure and temperature sender might not work with a Holley Terminator X. I have two turbo EFI projects going on. I have one Holley Terminator that I bought that was actually uh, headed for the dot with aluminum 5.3 GT45 cheap thrills combination. So I, if I have to buy the Holley Dominator or whatever to make this stuff work, I really don't want to spend twice. You know, it's 2,000 ish instead of 1,000 ish, but that's not today. So I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. But if you are a Holley Terminator expert, along with the low dollar motorsports senders, I haven't done any research, nothing, but if you have or know the answer, don't hold back. Let me know. I'm a carburetor guy. This thing should have a pair of dominators on it in Elenco. <laughs> Chain to the jack, torque converter's in, ready to jack it into place. The torque converter is a transmission specialties, allegedly a step above the XHD, but it suspiciously looks just like an XHD, so... It was relatively inexpensive, allegedly built for my application. I extended the pilot because I didn't pay extra for that. So live and learn. We'll give it a try. If it doesn't work, I know how to change it. I like to get it bolted up flush to the engine with about three bell housing bolts and then make sure I can get my safety chain off. And in this case, the shop towel I had over it because I don't want to scratch it. I've mentioned I spent years in working in transmission shops. For bell housing bolts my go-to is always a flex headed ratchet. I have one with a bent handle but I actually prefer this one. The 36 inch 3 8 extension snap-on. In this case going together new I'm using the chrome swivel snap-on and to hold the bolt into the socket I just put a piece of paper over the head and force it in there that way it won't fall out while you're doing the very top or anything you can't reach by hand so that works slick it was dramatically easier getting the transmission up on the back of the engine without the three inch wide flex plate shield so the ATI SFI Bellhausen is definitely a space saver you can only imagine how nice it would be with an aftermarket case as well but in this case pun intended going through all the hassle the shield is now closer to the transmission and I have the floor board clearance I was looking for it was close before it might have rattled now I know it won't so now back here let me show some augmented light here I think I'm gonna make a bracket for the dump valve probably using the governor cover bolts or the back of the pan could use the mount bolts as well I'll come up with something Plenty of room here for plumbing and whatnot. My Allen head bolts worked out down here. Easy to get a socket and a ratchet on them. So simple. I'm not sure I'm totally in love with my dry shaft safety loop, but it's okay for now. I guess ultimately I might have it attached to the cross member. But I see lots of them done like this. She's in. Next step, plumb the dump valve. I had a nap and a snack, and now I'm back out in the garage. It's, I don't know, 9 o'clock at night, messing around with the 
dot valve, I had to make a bracket. So I just kind of freehanded one out of a hunk of aluminum. It's going to mount on the governor cover like that. Things get pretty tight. I had to reduce the head on the one that's going underneath that fitting. And if you remember, maybe you don't, I drilled and tapped two of these ICT ones, eighth inch up here. I tapped this one quarter inch down here. Well, this is too congested down here, so I redrilled the one in the car from eighth inch to quarter inch. NPT, and I'm gonna to try to assemble this and see if it's possible to make hoses go each way. So let's uh, bolt it on, see what happens. Well, it's definitely tight, but doable. Sorry about the shadows. That mounted up nicely. So the line up there on the governor cover has to loop down and go to here. And then this, the actual end is over here. I'm gonna come down, probably run it inside these brackets and up to the output of the transmission cooler line. And then of course my normal cooler connections will be there and there. It's hard to do this at night with a flashlight, but that's the concept anyway. Let me get you a better view. So yeah, things get tight up there, but it uh, actually, as far as floorboard clearance, came out pretty good. So again, sorry about the flashlight, but it's dark in here. All right, tomorrow I'll plumb it up with some PTFE. If you have successfully assembled traditional braided steel line with a rubber core, PTFE is going to be a dream. It's easy. You do need an actual braided line cutter. Traditional hose, I use a chop saw. With the PTFE, you can't. You need to make a quick clean cut without melting the plastic liner. So this is a Speedway. I just bought it and it's working just fine. It was like $39. You can spend hundreds of dollars depending on how many hoses you're going to make. For tools, all I'm using today is two three quarter wrenches, a pair of pliers, and a roll of duct tape. I mark my line. It's easy to mark these PTFE because you know exactly where the hose is going to end. If you install the fittings where they're going to go and just measure in between, you're going to nail it. So disassemble the fitting. This is what you get. You get a olive. That's what it's called. It only goes on one way. It's tapered. It has a a seat right there that's going to go in on the plastic. You have the end cap and the fitting itself. I mock and tape, pull off a little piece of tape about yay wide, stretch it really tight with my mock centered in the tape, and then I chomp it off with the cutters. I use a pair of pliers to kind of squish it back round gently, and then slide this into the PF, <laughs> PTFE center. Sounds like a candy bar. Just to make it round again. Stuff's really workable, so. You do that before taking off the tape, and one last thing before you take the tape off is slide the fitting down past. I have a set of AeroQuip soft jaws that I have always used with AN fittings, but in this case, it goes together so easy, a couple wrenches is all you need. So before moving the tape, I've slid the end cap on with a skirt Call that the skirt facing away. And I've worked the actual fitting into the center so everything's round. Now I'm going to pull it out, remove the tape, and work on getting the olive installed. So this is my non-ouchy pot. I just took my pocket screwdriver and loosened up the braid around the plastic so I can slide the olive in. If you use your finger right here, it's going to hurt, but this works really good. There's nothing you can't do with a pocket screwdriver. You just want to loosen it up. You don't want to flare it out too much, but just enough so the olive's going to slide over the plastic. I was able to push the olive in by hand and it stopped on the inner seat. Now it's a simple matter of putting a little lube. You can use spit if you want to, but I'm going to use a little 336 or WD-40 or whatever. I do the threads and the portion that's going to slide in. So you pop that in all the way. It goes in flush. And then you just got to tighten up the back knot. You're not relying on like traditional braided lines where you have to make a crimp. This is the actual sealing process. Now you're just going to hold it in place with the nut. 
I pop the fitting in. Now I just have to slide the nut up on tight. I like to hold the nut and turn the fitting. That way it doesn't mess up the wire braid. And just like that, assembled. This would be an excellent spot for an actual AN wrench. I have a whole set made by Jags and they don't ever actually fit anything. <laughs> they hang on my wall. I want to use them every time I'm excited. I go grab them and they don't fit. So maybe I know they make an adjustable aluminum wrench. A couple of those would really be slick. So the only drawback, I guess, it, with uh, PTFE lines, for instance, I made this line for the inlet to my dump valve. Then I decided on a different routing. So I'm going to cut it here and install this fitting instead. And I'll save that, but you can't reuse it with the, you've already crushed the olives. So I'll save that section. Maybe it'll fit somewhere someday or it'll, you know, just be a bad memory. So no big deal. And when you're finished making any hydraulic line, have the decency to blow it out with air. Uh, the ones I cut with the chop saw, the traditional braided line, I use cob cleaner or brake clean and then blow it out with air both directions several times because that fine debris can really mess up your good work. Well, that doesn't happen very often, but I got lucky. <clears throat> the piece I was going to cut off and not use is identical to the one I was just making, which was going to have a 90 on the end. So I can save this because my next step is to plumb the cooler with a straight fitting. So I'll save that on the roll. I'll chop this off and just install the correct fittings and I didn't waste a thing. Now that just doesn't happen to me very often. Well, that's a congested little area, but it's all plumbed. It's always important to me that the lines don't touch anything. In this case, they go under the shield. Oh, sorry about the shadows, but up there, clearance everywhere. That's gonna be all right. Again, a kind of a tight little area, but if you take it slow, do a little planning, only make one real mistake. <laughs> That worked out. And at least my AN wrench does fit the nut. It just doesn't fit the body of the fitting. Maybe I'm expecting too much. They do make aluminum pliers. So I think that's next on my list, a pair of those. The Dash 6 PTFE line that I used in this video was just a kit I bought on eBay. It came with a couple each of different style fittings and 20 or 25 feet of hose. It was my first adventure into PTFE and I just bought what looked like a decent kit. I don't know where it was originally made, but quality-wise, it seems just fine. I had no issue with it. Normally, when stuff is questionable or junk, it's apparent right off the bat. So this was easy to work with. The quality seems good. We'll see what happens. Next on the 72 Nova, I could go two directions. I could go forward. I need to work on the front fenders. The car came from a body shop where the guy never finished the work. What he's done is fine. And I have to replace the lower rear sections on either side. I don't know if they'll have a big hole for exhaust. I don't know where I'm doing that yet. So possibilities are endless, but that'll be a fun project on the old fabrication, transmission assembly, hose building, everything bench. I love this bench. Everything happens right here. And I also have to work on the rear end. I need to remove it and weld up properly, supporting the four link brackets make some kind of device to keep the tires from towing in, from bending the housing, uh, because there isn't any. And I'm gonna set it up for a wheelie bar. I'm pointing up here, you can't see it, but with a bias ply tire, I want the option of having a wheelie bar. So I'm gonna weld all that stuff on. While I'm building it, it's the time to do it, not after the fact. It's no doubt gonna live on the radial tires that are on it. And that's a completely different four length setting. You want the car to raise, not squat with a radial tire, so, and wheelie bars will not be required. So either way, I want it to be kind of universal. And that's pretty much it today. I think we covered a lot. Thanks for watching, it's a long weekend. I hope you have a great time.